Armory Disc Golfers, welcome back to another video. Disc golfers love talking about things like springs and coils and rubber bands, but today we're actually going to talk about how to time your throw to put you into these explosive positions of power so that you can throw like some of the world's best. Let's get into it. You will often hear people say things like, oh, your timing is off, or it's all in the timing. But I found that there's actually very few resources out there that show how to properly time the disc golf throw. Now this isn't going to cover every single little piece of disc golf timing because that conversation could be hours long, but I am going to give you a structure to work off of that professionals use so that you can time up your throw correctly. Today, we're gonna to be talking about timing the coil specifically. And so I need to talk a little bit about what the coil is. When I'm talking about coil in a disc golf throw, I'm talking about the tension that's created between your upper and lower body through what has traditionally been referred to as the reach back. The reason that we want coil in our throw is because the more coil that we can get, the more power that we can get. Similar to loading a spring. If you push down on it a little bit, you can get a little power. If you push down on it a lot, whenever it releases, you can get a lot of power. This effective energy transfer from coil to uncoil happens through proper timing. But before discussing proper timing in a disc golf throw, I wanna give three real quick examples of improper timing. That way we have something to compare it against. The first error that I see with improper timing is very common whenever people first start playing disc golf, and that's never taking your eyes off the target or looking forward for far too long. And the throw looks something like this. The coil never really happens. The timing is just way off. Second error is, as people start to get better, they learn, oh, I need to turn and look away from the target, but then they often turn too early or too far or both, and their throw looks something like this. Now, the problem with this timing is, there is no coil at all here. There's nothing in my body that is saying, snap forward. I can force myself forward from this position, but you're not activating your body's stretch reflex here. I mean, you can compare this position to this position if you stand here and do this, you will feel tension all through your back and legs, as opposed to here, where I can rest comfortably all day. No coil here, coil here, and that's caused by improper timing of hip and shoulder rotation. The third and more advanced error, I guess, is you're probably somewhere in between this first and second error. And your throw can look pretty good, especially in full speed. And that's when the shoulders and hips go back and then they go forward more or less together. You can throw the disc 300 plus feet, maybe 350 plus feet, but you're gonna top out pretty quickly with a throw like this, even though it looks pretty respectable, like I said, in full speed, because it might look something like this which doesn't look horrible, but you can get more out of your body with proper timing. We'll get into that now. And again, remember, we could talk for hours about all the different intricacies of this, but I want to try to give you something brief and simple that you can focus on and remember while you're out in the field and while you're playing. And then we'll discuss other parts of the throw in other videos later on. I've spent hours and hours watching slow motion videos of tons of different professionals, and I see a pattern across each and every one of them. I've boiled it down into a four-step process that you and I can implement into our own games. I see this progression from Simon Lazat, Paul McBeth, Drew Gibson, Eagle McMahon, Gannon Burr, and more. And this progression is eyes, foot, shoulders, foot. Let's break down each of these different parts. So first, eyes. You want to look where you're throwing. Obviously, this is gonna help you with aim, but it's going to help you coil your upper body against your lower body as well. Keep your eyes on target of the line that you want to throw as you're moving forward. Don't get caught in this trap of lining up your shot, and then as soon as you start moving, your eyes start drifting off target too early. Keep your eyes locked on target all the way through our second cue point, which is foot. Specifically, this back foot that comes behind you in your X step. We've got to back up a little bit so you can actually see my feet. So we've got eyes, foot, and now, and not before now, when this foot comes down onto the ground, you can begin your shoulder rotation, which will begin your coils. So eyes, foot, shoulders, and as the shoulders go back, moving as a unit, both shoulders together are going back. As your shoulders are going back together, they should naturally start to draw your head a bit off target. It's important that you're rotating both of your shoulders together as a unit and that you're rotating your shoulders here and not your hips. 
I'm not saying that you don't use your hips in the throw. I'm not saying you don't use leg drive, but in this part of the throw, you are rotating your shoulders backwards and that is creating coil between your upper and lower body. If you just move your front shoulder, you're just going to create coil here in your shoulder muscle and you can throw with your shoulder muscle, I guess. If that's what you want to do, it's not gonna go very far. But if you rotate your shoulders together, now, I mean, get into this position. You will feel tension through your legs, up through your back. What your body's going to want to do is to release this tension and snap out of it. So you've created coil, you're activating your body's natural stretch reflex, and we're gonna use that as an on-ramp for the rest of the throw. However, you don't let your body get into that natural on-ramp until this front foot hits the ground. So we have eyes, foot, shoulders, foot. When this front foot hits the ground and not before, you can release this tension and throw the disc. Up until this front foot hits the ground, your weight needs to be back loaded onto your leg. If you're landing like this, then your weight has gone forward too early and you have undoubtedly lost coil doing that third advanced error somewhere along the way where your hips and shoulders are going forward together. You're gonna feel tension here, and then once this front foot comes down, now you actually have a base, an athletic base, to transfer weight into, to brace into, and to throw the disc out of. But you don't just have to take my word for it. Like I said, I see this in every professional that I've looked at, so let's go check some of them out. All right, so here I am back at the lab. I've got a couple guys lined up for you to watch, and you're going to see this same progression from each and every one of them. Eyes, foot, shoulders, foot, like we've been talking about. Uh, but first off, shout out to all the people who film these professionals throwing in slow motion and post to YouTube for us to look at and critique their form and learn from. Y'all are real MVPs. Uh, obviously, all of these videos will be in the description below. So go check them out, check out their channels, etc. So Simon, starting off here, his eyes are locked onto the target all the way through his back X step foot hitting the ground. Eyes still locked on the target, but now if this foot is down, his shoulders can begin rotating back. You see how his shoulders are rotating, not his hips. His hips are staying parallel to the camera all the way through his front foot getting down onto the ground. His weight is very nice and centered because he's kept it back loaded up until this point. And now this tremendous coil between his lower and his upper body allows him to just absolutely rip the disc out like we all know Simon does. The next guy that we're gonna look at, Eagle McMahon, similar pattern. Eyes looking forward at the target all the way up until this X step foot gets down on the ground. His shoulders and hips are pretty even and square, but now that this back foot is on the ground, his shoulders will go back as his hips stay relatively facing the camera. Obviously, as your shoulders rotate this far back, it's going to pull your hips back some, but he's rotating his shoulders back, weight still on this back leg, not leaned out forward, staying nice and centered over his body. This front foot gets down and now he has this athletic base to transfer this weight into. You see hips facing the camera, shoulders turned way back far away. He also likes to sling them out there pretty quickly. And before we look at these next pros throw, I want to remind you that we are not just a YouTube channel, we also have an online disc golf store. So the next time that you need to make a disc golf purchase, we'd really appreciate if you would consider us for that purchase. We've got discs from every major manufacturer. We've got pictures of each individual disc that we have in stock. And you can join our newsletter to get 10% off your first order and get updates whenever we have special drops and restocks and whatnot. So thank you all so much for your support. We really appreciate it. We're back to the GOAT, Paul Macbeth. We're gonna see the same pattern out of him. Eyes looking forward to his target. Paul is actually notorious for having a very forward facing sort of throw. Eyes on target back foot hits the ground now that the back foot hits the ground the shoulders can rotate backwards the shoulders are going to continue to rotate backwards all the way through his front foot planting and now that his front foot is planted now he can begin uncoiling those shoulders to do paul Macbeth sort of things And last but not least, I want to show you Ricky's throw because Ricky is a little bit different. You can see how he starts turning backwards early, but he maintains this sort of position up until 
this back foot hits the ground here. And even though he's starting from a position here, you see his shoulders and his hips are relatively in line with each other. And now as he coils, coiling through all the way until this front foot hits the ground, he has pretty neutral hips, very rotated shoulders. So he has a ton of coil here. And as we know, Ricky can bomb too. So we see this same pattern of eyes, foot, shoulders, foot across so many different disc golf professionals who all have very different forms and very different styles, but they follow this same progression. You and I should too. I hope this video helped you out. It's been a huge help for me as I continue to improve my own personal form and enjoy the game more and more as well. Disc golf isn't easy, but it can be simple. Do me a favor, leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.